Hey, what is up everyone? I am Pickled here once again and I'm back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Mercy Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest for the Super Nintendo slash Game Boy Advance. So last time we have managed to gone through the forms of Gangplank Galleon and we managed to able to get ourselves all of the bonus areas. In addition to that, we also obtain every single of those DK Hero Coins. And today for this episode is the fact that we're going to be moving on to the second world in this game, which appears to be Crocodile Cauldron. And as far as this name suggests, we're going to be exploring around entirely in lava environments. So here we go, on to Hothead Hop. So hopefully we should be able to be... Have my as well have ourselves an easier time with it, but this is where the difficulty starts to get ramped up super tremendously because until when it gets to the point, although first of all, let's go ahead and get some more extra lives from the top, and um, hopefully we won't be having that much trouble with it whatsoever. So hopefully we won't be able to die uh, the insane amount of times as we expect. Oh yeah, the main emphasis on this stage, as you can see, is the fact that every time whenever we come across into those crocodile heads in during the actual lava, uh, there are some different color variations of those uh, crocodile heads based off from the forms of the actual... I would say it's almost like a spring kind of uh, thing, that um, if you hop onto those uh, those ones, as you can see right there, that I just hop into, it allows me able to actually just to jump. And then if you come across into the green variations, they become more accurately like a platform. So even then, there's not much else I can uh, usually speak about that specific stuff. So either way though, let's go ahead and just carry that cannonball to the cannon. And then that way we should be able to get actually access to, of course, the, the first bonus area. And there's the next Kremlin coin. So hopefully we would be able to get more of those as much as possible. And we actually access to a checkpoint right there. And here, we actually come across into another new animal buddy, which appears to be by the forms of... Well, I would say his name was actually, uh, Squitter, which is usually a Squitter of the Spider. And he's actually pretty useful though, because all he can really do is the fact that he can able to actually create those spider webs as platforms. And it will be very useful though, especially noticeable whenever we get onto the forms of, uh... Let's just say in the hardest parts of the game, especially noticeable if we're trying to able to collect the remaining collectibles. Specifically, you know, the um, the Cranky Kong video game coins, as what, well, according to the Wikipedia uh, thing, it says it on here, or as I like to call it, a DK Hero coins. So I just wanted to always call it that out. So anyways, and we need to use him for specifically two bonus areas. There's another one in here. And yeah, as far as this level suggests, with the bonus areas department, it contains three bonus areas, which can be same applies to the next level as well, which then again, we'll talk more about it whenever we get onto that, so... Basically, in this bonus stage, we need to just simply create, you know, a whole bunch of spider webs as platforms, you know? But, as far as I said this before, we're not exactly done with the bonus areas just yet though, because there's actually going to be one last bonus area on this level, and that's what appears to be at the very end of the level. So by simply, you can either use, uh, you know, Squitter the Spider in order to reach it, or you can able to actually just utilize the actual uh, buddy tossing thing if you manage to team up with like, you know, Dixie or Diddy Kong, depending on what characters you're going to be selecting. But, I always attempt to go for with uh, the Squitter, as you can see right there, so it just makes every single part of that specific obstacles, as you can see, makes a little bit more sense for this kinds of stuff. So we for wait though, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as we might as well noticing this. And let's go ahead and get ourselves our extra life here, and also the banana coin journey forms of that ending portion of that particular level. So, yeah, it's not too bad though, especially noticeable how the fact that usually whenever I play this for the first time, I just seriously have some struggling points. Oh no, I accidentally just missed out on that DK coin. Uh, I guess I might come back for that at the end of the video, sadly, but, oh well, let's move on to Cannon's Clam. And, as far as you notice something in the middle portion of the map, they do realize there is actually that particular special thing right there, which I probably showed that off until later throughout the, the majority of this Let's Play. Not now though, because we still got a whole way things to go for this point. So even then though, here we go on to the next level as you can see, and this entire level is going to be huge emphasis on using cannon shots. You know, just like New Forms of how it does it in, uh, you know, in the previous game for sure, except the fact that as you can see, that on these little, uh, 
different face icons between Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong, sometimes there's going to be a lot of emphasis on keep on switching between them, so that way you can able to actually access those cannons specifically. It won't be very noticeable until whenever we get onto the later portion of the game, so even then, no, we're not going to explain for ourselves at this point just yet because you know we're still on the early points in the game so we can at least expect we can able to actually come across into some scenarios like this so so yeah a uh, few things we want to explain about this for this point today is the fact that obviously today's day is the forms of uh i would say is the 5th of august today so in this case in 2020 so then again there's not much else we can able to actually just to discuss upon apart from the fact that i can able to discuss upon a lot of things during the forms that this game actually offers us to. So let's get a K in case and uh, hopefully without any much- oh jeez that was close and uh, I didn't get myself my uh, my partner companion Dixie Kong in the actual barrel. In fact we'll try to figure out for ourselves at this rate but either way though let's just hope if we can able to just not hop onto here though unless if we can able to take down this the army of Kremlings as you can see. And then hopefully I should be able to just, well, I was hoping I can able to grab an O, but it's nothing usually just becomes reachable. So we'll just go all the way down here. And there we go, we can able to actually have Dixie Kong with us. So hopefully we should make it happen. So, yeah, as far as I said this before, that, uh, you know how the fact that with, uh, the previous level that we've already explored on, which is Hothead Hop, uh, that level contains, uh, three bonus areas. And that could be the same applies to this level too, but it forms of, uh, well, Canyon's Clam. And basically, we need to find, uh, three bonus areas specifically. Well, we've already come across into one since the very beginning, but now we need to come across into the other two, which I think... The other two is like, well, one of them is actually in the middle portion of the level, and I believe the last one is going to be at the end of the level, I'm presuming so. But even then, now, hopefully we're able to try our best if we're able to find them, but if we somehow accidentally miss one of them, then, well, obviously we'll have to just simply just do a little bit of some jump cuts and stuff. So either way, uh, let's switch to Dixie Kong for a moment, so just in case we can able to let her utilize the actual ponytail so that way she can able to grab the banana coin in case so let's head on to here to go access to what else another bonus area so either way in this one we need to find the actual token itself so either way though or in this case the actual uh, crumbling coin or whatever you want to call it though which even then i always attempt to call those items these like uh crumbling coins as far as you guys can clearly tell because I always keep on used to of like calling it that, just because of how the fact that, well, they're just there for the sake of the forms that that's, uh, well, until later you won throughout the majority of this Let's Play in mind. Oh, son of a biscuit, I hate these neckies. Oh, it's bad enough I will have to do this by my own, even for Diddy Kong's sake. In fact, one thing I totally forgot to mention about stuffing is the fact that, um, well, this game will be pretty much basically will become 25 years old, at least until when it gets to December this year. So, at least even then, though, we could expect it able to celebrate Donkey Kong Country 2 release on the Super Nintendo for it comes to likely becoming 25 years old, which can be same applies for, uh, you know, I mentioned this before already, Pocahontas, and especially noticeable with, uh, GoldenEye 007 film, and especially noticeable with the forms of the timeless classic, even with the massive box office department, and as of course, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and as of course, the original Toy Story, which, either way though, still looks so successful even to this day. Especially noticeable also is the fact that you know with the actual obscure 32X game, which appears to be Knuckles Chaotix, um, that game will be also become 25 years old as well, and um, I think that's as far as we can say about this for the most part, even though at some point during the forms of it, I would say in November, I'm also able to actually re-watch the first Toy Story film again, so that way I can able to actually just to look back on it, and then just to see how it usually holds up, even for the forms of 25 years ago, so either way, Whenever when the film first came out on that particular year, 
Which, you know, roughly the same year as when, uh, you know, Donkey Kong Country 2 came out on the Super Nintendo. So, you know, you get the idea for that, for that specific point. And I suppose another thing I should probably mention this also is the fact that much like Donkey Kong Country, in Japan, this game calls it Do uh, Super Donkey Kong 2. In this case, this time around, it actually has a subtitle with it, such as Diddy and Dixie. So this means it actually represents those two playable characters you're going to be playing as for the majority of the entire adventure. So either way though, that's as far as I can say about it. And by the way, you notice I've accidentally managed to went into that second uh, bonus area again by complete accident. This is probably because I just want to show you guys something about the fact that if you manage to obtain uh, the creme coin on during the bonus stage, then, well, or the bonus area I should say, then uh, the actual creme coin has already been ticked. So even then, uh, this actually represents that you've already just managed to collect that. So, just want to classify that. And, yeah, looks like I'm missing the another DK coin, so I'll meet you guys back. Actually, kind of think about it, it's actually not that far from here, though. And, in fact, it was actually on the forms of uh, the first bonus area on the stage, which I accidentally just somehow ignored that, probably because it's been... You know, quite a few days since I actually played the Game Boy Advance version kind of thing about it, just to get a lot of practice with. Luckily, if you want to able to leave the level, then you can have to simply just pause the game and press select, and then you would able to actually exit out the entire level. So, simple as that, really. Even though if you really want to go for those levels for the first time, you can't do that, unless if you're about to complete certain levels. So, I just want to classify that. Next level we have is well, our Lava Lagoon. It's basically once again takes place in a water theme level. And, um, yeah, as far as I can say, the actual main nemesis on this level, as you can see, that um, we have ourselves a some sort of like a helper companion, which appears to be by the forms of. Well, I would say I don't know what his name was, to be honest with you, because again, it's been such a long while. Oh, yeah, his name was actually by the forms of Clapper the seal which this allows him to able to actually just to help you out in certain water parts such as for instance in this level for example in lava lagoon basically we need to let him just try to able to let the water turn into its normal state because eventually at this point that the water will able to actually transforming into the forms of the red variation of that specific water so if you do manage able to stay there for too long and then basically if you manage to let the red water decides to go impact on you then basically you will able to lose the uh, Diddy Kong or Dixie Kong depending on what uh, playable characters you're going to be selecting so so yeah, um, that's as far as memories goes, as well as I can say about this level, to be honest with you. Apart from the fact that this level, much like the forms of, uh, the previous water level, which appears to be by the forms of, uh, well, you know, uh, jo Lock Jar's Locker, uh, this level only contains one bonus area, and that will actually have to be on this part here. And then we need to take the barrel, and then go to the left, and then just go underneath that particular point here, and you should able to actually go to this bonus area, which it allows you to able to utilize with on guard the swordfish for the whole entire time, so that way we can able to once again just manage to destroy a lot of enemies as you can see right there, so not much else you can really comment in on that, so Oh really? How can that seriously count? Uh oh well. As long as we can able to have ourselves the actual uh the actual, uh, the partner kind of ability, such as, of course, trying to able to do some sort of, like, a tossing throw, um, uh, element here, then that way we can able to hit back and then just try again. So, even then, uh, that's the only cool thing about it, and, uh, plus we still got plenty of time in order to able to actually succeed by that particular bonus area, as you can see. So, either way, though, that's, that's as far as I can think about it. So, either way, though, let's just go ahead and try this again, and, thankfully, we did manage to proceed from here, Let's deal with this last enemy, and we get ourselves a creme coin, so... There we go. In addition to more bananas to our, you know, bananas counts. So either way though, so far so good, we got about 31 extra lives. Still, much like the forms of Donkey Kong Country, it's the fact that, um... Usually this game is super generous with extra lives. It's especially noticeable how the fact they've been able to actually come across into a couple of them, such as like... You know, trying to deal with the actual Swanky Kong quiz challenges and all the other stuff. So, 
And before we leave, especially noticeable, we need to get that estimation mark barrel. And then because of that, we need to get ourselves our glorious DK coin. So that way we can able to actually obtain it from here. And then, don't worry, uh, if you somehow manage to still become invincible, you still manage to survive from that specific uh, hot water, seems kind of syndrome. And that way you would be able to actually make your way to the end of the level, so much so. So either way though, and we got ourselves another extra life. So hopefully our life's count should be a little bit more increased as far as times go by. So even that note, that concludes Lava Lagoon. And let's go ahead and save our game quickly in case if there are some progressions, I might as well able to actually just to double check how much percentage we're in. And it looks like we are on 22%. So even then, though, it's not too bad. Especially noticeable how the fact that we're actually quite breezing for this for the most part. So, you know, you get the idea. I will try to able to actually just to complete certain, uh, uh, well, we might as well able to actually say this right now. That we will try to able to actually complete one world per video. Just like any forms of how it does it on Donkey Kong Country, basically. There might, there might be a few exceptions here and now, but we'll get to those in during the future. Specifically, whenever we get onto our last plays of, let's just say, in Donkey Kong Country Returns, and especially noticeable with Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and all the other stuff. So, either way, though, the next level we're going to be hit onto is Red Hot Ride. And the actual element of this stage is the fact that we need to get a lot of usage on those uh, inflatable balloon, or in this case, those blue balloon platforms, which either way, every time you would really want to pro uh, proceed to the next portions of the level, oh jeez, um, I think there might be a barrel on here somewhere, which hopefully we weren't able to take this guy down, so because of that, we need to get ourselves ramp B here, so that way we can able to have a nice real fun ride with him. And as far as bonus areas, as far as I'm concerned, with this particular stage in mind, uh, it actually contains uh, two bonus areas. So either way, though, we can expect we can able to actually just to find them, basically. So hopefully we should be able to actually just to do so. And, um... Again, there's not much else we can really talk about this, to be honest with you guys, apart from the fact that, well, usually relatively speaking, until, well, to be more specifically, you know what kind of reminds me of something? It's the fact that if we manage to somehow try to do the majority of those Donkey Kong Country Let's Plays, all things considered, like, you know how the fact that last year, that um, Daffy has already tackled through, uh, you know, Donkey Kong Country, the first game, while the actual first game becomes, uh, you know, 25 years old, ever since about a year ago. But now we are in 2020, this means with that about the fact that Donkey Kong Country 2, uh, Diddy's Conquest will become 25 years old this year. And also soon applies to the forms of uh, the another obscure game for the Donkey Kong games, and that appears to be Donkey Kong Land 1 for the Game Boy, which, uh, Usually, relatively speaking, there's another game I forgot to mention, just because, well, I'm more into the forms of Donkey Kong Country stuff, to be honest with you. Well, nothing too much of the actual, uh, things to discuss upon, for brutal honest, when it comes to the forms of Donkey Kong Land trilogies, as far as I'm aware. But, either way, though, we'll talk more about it on them until whenever we get on to later on, after we, we uh, gone through pretty much through every single, uh, Donkey Kong Country games at this rate, specifically in the original trilogy of games first, and then um, afterwards though, however though, then we can move on to, well I would say, between Donkey Kong Land trilogy, as well as uh, two modern duologies or something like that, it, it, I really don't know if when that's going to be up, just because there's going to be a lot of emphasis on pushing back or pushing forward kind of stuff, but either way, I just want to classify that. And as you can see on that second bonus area, I managed to able to take the easy route by simply utilize Dixie Kong for her ponytail. So that's the only thing I always intend to enjoy. Or even you can able to utilize that, uh, you know, the inflatable balloon platform. So that way you can able to go underneath to the left of that cliffside, and then that way you should be able to actually make your way to the inform to that bonus area from there. So either way though, and before we do anything else, I believe. There might be a DK coin just about right here, as long as you take yourself to the invincibility frames if you manage to have Dixie Kong with you. So that way you can able to actually take a hit and take the invincibility frames after doing so. And thankfully, you can able to actually do some sort of like a, I don't know, a another jump kind of way. And that way you can able to actually reach for that DK coin. Uh, well, to be more specifically, the hero coin as it is. And that way you should able to obtain it. So yeah, it's not that too much of a... Um, 
uh, mostly able to actually just, uh, you know, try to say about this here. I do apologize for the, you know, again with the lack of commentary for the sake of time, just because of how the fact that we actually get into the progression of that specific point worth noting for, so... And um, talking of the, um, talking of which, when it comes to the forms of Donkey Kong Country games here now as well, until when it gets to the point, it's all likely next year in 2021, if someone else can able to deal with Donkey Kong Country 3, did, uh, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble, uh, that game will also become 25 years old until when it gets to the point until 2021. So yeah, I can't even believe that we're actually going to be doing these kinds of stuff, especially for trying to celebrating those. Iconic uh, gaming franchise, as you guys should probably already noticed at this point. So, anyways, let's go and, and obtain the G letter, so that way we can get ourselves the another extra life. So, we can expect this much, and we need to use those air coins until you're able to actually just let that balloon decide to float up, because even then, uh, that's the entire key element of this stage. So. And what if my first time I play this level on the Wii's virtual console version? I just have no idea what I'm doing. But thankfully, that since I've, again, practiced this on the Game Boy Advance version, this means I basically know what I'm doing with the forms of the level itself. So either way though, now let's go ahead and move on to the next level, which appears to be Squawk's Shaft. And as far as I recall correctly, that we might able to come across into ourselves the another returning animal buddy ever since any forms of the original Donkey Kong Country, and that would appear to be buddy forms of what else? Scorks the parrot. So either way though, because if you remember from the likes of the well, let's just say in Donkey Kong Country that uh, he did make his appearance, but it only appears in one level, which appears to be on Torchlight Trouble. Thankfully, in Donkey Kong Country 2, uh, you know, Diddy's Conquest kind of thing about it, he's now made it appear more often when it comes to Scorch the Parrot himself, which even then I will point it out whenever we get into him eventually, but either way though, let's go ahead and get started with, uh, um, you know, Scorch's, um, well, I don't know how do I call this level again, I have to be honest to you guys. Um, well, as I should say, Squawk's Shaft. So either way though, I do apologize with the actual commentary for the sake of time for this point today, folks, because I really am, because there's not much else I can say, to be honest with you, apart from, you know, just trying to keep on mentioning about the forms of 25 year uh, releases in, in terms of iconic stuff. So either way though, let's just go ahead and get ourselves the first bonus area on this stage. And by the way, with this particular level in mind, it actually contains three bonus areas, just like the, uh, well, just like the forms of, uh, Hothead Hop, as well as Cannon's Clam. So even then, though, we could expect this much. So anyways, and once again, we need to bust out every single treasure as much as possible. I'm pretty sure that treasure over there contains a Kremlin coin. So I must admit that I must be able to actually just, you know, try to able to memorize certain things and what have you, so... Even though this level kind of feels like the same thing for how it does it in uh, Cannon's Claim, except, well, obviously because of how the fact that we might able to come across into, what else, uh, Squawks the Parrot until eventually. So either way though, let's just go ahead and keep on things moving, and let's go ahead and switch to Diddy Kong right here, and then just toss Dixie Kong upwards, that way we can get ourselves not only more bananas, but also some more banana coins to top it off too. So we can expect this much, so... Let's wait until that Zingo just managed to go all the way to the left, and just go ahead and just go onto these uh, clamp traps, and uh, hopefully we should be able to be very cautious with that for the moment. Oh jeez! Oh, did I seriously? Oh, thank goodness for that. Although, much like the forms of Donkey Kong Country, I'm not exactly a great master when it comes to the forms of trying to able to fire those, uh, cannon shot sadly, just because I have to be dead on with the actual remainings of that shot, especially on this rotation formation, because whenever we get onto one particular level coming up in the future, specifically on Friday, that uh, we'll probably talk more about it when, whenever we get onto that day, so... Anyway, so let's go ahead and aim from here, and just get into the forms of the second bonus area. So we can expect we can able to deal with team-up uh, cooperation here. And what else we're going to have to do with even more uh, cannon blasting for that particular level. And then that way if we go all the way up to the top as much as possible, then we should be able to classify for reaching up to, what else, the actual creme coin. So even then though, we can expect to able to obtain that. 
and we got 22 so far. So even then though, we've gone pretty good, especially noticeable how the fact that, well, not too many uh, deaths on it whatsoever so far. But then again, I say so far just because, well, we'll find out whenever we get onto the forms of uh, the later portions throughout. So either way, um... But again, there's not much else I can usually just trying to say about this for the most part, though, so either way. Um, as far as you probably already know, right from the start, though, is the fact that how many of those uh, creme coins that we might able to consider fighting in total? There are about 75 of them in total, so hopefully we should be able to obtain them all in time, especially noticeable that this will be the 102% completion of this game. So, for those of you probably wondering anyway, so... And here we go, folks. Here's the Squawks the Parrot in action in Donkey Kong Country 2. And uh, basically, unlike the original game counterparts, that he only showed up as in, you know, only one level, which is Torchlight uh, level. Well, in this case, the Torchlight level, as far as I like to call it that particular level. Again, it's been such a long time since, since I actually played Donkey Kong Country 1 on the, uh, the Super Nintendo slash Game Boy Vans, even though I'm still in the biggest progression in terms of the Game Boy Color version. But then again, now let's not talk about it uh, more often, because if we go all the way over here, in addition to able to have yourselves a hero coin, but it's also, get this, a bonus area. And I think that pretty much takes care of the every single of those bonus areas we can find in this level. So we can expect this much, and once again we need to dish out as many of those zingers as possible, but, but this time around, uh, you know, Squawks the Parrot has more um, subtle things. Like specifically, he can now able to fly, especially noticeable he can now shoot those projectiles as much as often now. So, even then though, he will be very useful though, especially noticeable whenever we get on to... Let's just say in the tougher portions on certain levels coming up. Oh, really? I forgot about certain enemies has been respawned. Oh god, I get a horrible feeling about this coming up, and now we'll have to be those stupid neckies right here. They're about to... Oh, jeez! I did not know that! Ah. Oh. God damn it, neckies. God damn it. But, luckily for me, at least we got ourselves a checkpoint for this point and on. Um, unfortunately though, this will be the first step of the playthrough, sadly, just because of how the fact that, well, sometimes that, this is what I mean when it comes to difficulty progression starts to get a little bit more ramped up at this point, probably because of how the fact that the, some people usually think that, uh, usually the challenging, uh, challenging portions of the game is actually, mo for the most part, is fair, which, uh, unlike in the, uh, well, unlike the original game, that uh, whenever we get onto certain bosses throughout, specifically that uh, we've already come across into one which is uh, Crow, but then uh, as far as we get into the next bosses coming up, then we'll probably discuss more about it whenever we get onto certain points. So, anywho. So let's try this again, and hopefully we should be able to actually just accomplish this level for good, even though after, despite able to actually gain owned, but that very, very annoying Neki enemy, which I have to admit though right away, the Nekis in this game can be pretty annoying to deal with, especially in the actual segments such as this. Like, I seriously swear to god, it's all, it always come across as like a random pattern to me though, especially when I play this on the Game Boy Band's version, that I seriously keep on getting owned by the actual Nekis right here, which I can't even believe, these are entirely impossible to dodge sometimes. Oh yeah, let's not forget about this guy here that just shoots the cannons um, downwards. But either way, though, as long as we can able to take him down, like no sweat, then, uh, you know, you get the idea for that solution here. So, alright, so let's keep on. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's on the same pattern here. Ah, <sighs> Luckily, we got to the end of the level, so at least we got that at least. And let's just hope we can try to get ourselves a G. There we go. And that way we get ourselves the extra life back. So, it's kind of a shame that we actually come across into that first death of the playthrough already, as I think I already noticed before. But anyways, let's move on to Cluffer's Clane, which appears to be the second boss. So, I wonder what this boss is going to be played out with, as a matter of fact. And it turns out it was actually a sword? Huh, kind of a weird boss, I have to say. And basically, in this entire battle, we need to basically just get a lot of emphasis on this usage, on the forms of those cannonballs, as you can see, and that way you should deal the damage on that particular swordsman kind of thing. So either way, though, after when you've done that, especially noticeable if you're trying to keep on, like, 
doing this in the same process. I think I should probably recommend DixieCon for the majority of the actual next phase. Simply because you know with these hangs or the hooks they can able to hang on to, that way you should be safe, especially noticeable if you keep on using uh, Dixie Kong's uh, ponytail hovering. So even then, if that's the only thing I should definitely recommend able to using that ability. So if you're having a hard time with it though, then you most likely get the idea. And then when you think you, uh, this guy was done, well, he's not down yet, because otherwise we need to do the same old thing as before, but except now he's trying to chase after you. To make things a little bit more interesting is the fact that once you use Dixie Kong for able to carry in a cannonball, like I just did right there, thankfully you can able to defend yourself if he just managed to able to calm down, such as that, and um, hopefully it shouldn't be that much of a problem, so even then up, but I can definitely see why that most people found this game to be a lot more difficult than the first game, but once you deal enough him for about three times in each phase, then he's toast, he's toasted. And I think that pretty much wraps it up for World 2, which is of course Crocodile Cauldron, even though despite the fact that we've off by uh, one last DK coin left. But hopefully we'll find that and join at some point during the forms of uh, the ending portion of this throughout. So yeah, it looks like I've actually didn't get myself my DK coin emblem for that, but uh, luckily it's not that far. So anyways, let's hit back onto this level and I'll meet you guys where exactly where that's gone, so I'll meet you guys there. So, jump cuts awaits. Okay, one jump cut later, and that was after the star barrel, in this case a checkpoint barrel, and use the squitter, the spider, and then create some spiderweb platforms, and then boom, there we go. That way we can get ourselves the hero coin, and once again, let's go ahead and leave, although luckily for me, I didn't activate the actual checkpoint barrel or anything like that. So either way though, and there we go, I think that pretty much pretty much wraps it up for the forms of Crocodile Cauldron right now. So either way though, I suppose we should probably end things off at this point right there, at this for the sake of time. So yeah, join me next time and let's play Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy uh, Diddy's Conquest. It's the fact that we're gonna be hit on to the third world in the game, which appears to be Krem Quail. Which I do apologize for that pronunciation error for that world, but either way though, that's how I can think about it. So see you guys on Friday. Later, fellas.